Now we're going to talk about standard heat of formation. Um, I like this one. Um, look, it has a sigma in it. I think that's kind of cool. <laughs> um, we are going to find delta H for a reaction using another method. Now remember, delta H is a state function. That's why we can use another, another method. We're going to end up with the same answer. We're just taking a slightly different path. So let me give you the definition. Uh, standard heat of formation is the energy released or absorbed when a compound is formed from elements. Okay, when a compound is formed from elements. Uh, we have tables and tables and tables of heat of formation. I want to show you what a table looks like. So here you can see we've got the name of the compound and then there is, I'm gonna bring this up close. Um, sorry, hope that's not making you sick. There's your delta H. We also have delta G and ent uh, entropy, our S. Um, so you have to be careful what numbers you're looking at, um, but we have lots and lots of thermodynamic tables and they have the heats of formation. Now you maybe saw on here, they just had a compound with the number. I've done a snippet of those compounds with numbers uh, right here to show you what they would look like. So for example, calcium carbonate says negative 1,207.6, and the unit on this is kilojoules per mole. And I want to help you interpret this, what it means taking that definition and reading the table. That means if we form calcium carbonate from its elements like this, calcium plus carbon plus oxygen to form calcium carbonate, and I'll balance this, I'll put three halves oxygen right there, the delta H for this, and we put a subscript F for formation. Now be careful with this. Um, students will go, oh wait, is that heat of fusion? No, this is heat of formation. And you'll just have to read it contextually um, to see if it's um, heat of fusion or heat of formation. Usually on heat of formation, we also have that not, that little circle sign, and that means that we're at standard conditions. Uh, remember, for thermodynamic dynamic standard conditions are going to be 25 degrees C and one ATM. So if we round this at 25 degrees C, and this is what would be published in the table, standard 25 degrees C, if we round this at 25 degrees C, um, combine calcium carbon, three halves mole of O2 to form calcium carbonate, it would release 1,207.6 kilojoules per mole. That's what that means. And the same is true here. Calcium plus oxygen to produce calcium oxide releases 635.1 kilojoules per mole. So there might be a time in your homework that you'll be given these values and you're expected to interpret that and write out the elements as reactants forming the product. Now, there are a few important things that I would like to point out. Um, tables, I showed you the table. Put a sticky note in your book or um, make it a favorite if you're looking up on the computer because you're going to go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth when you do these problems. Looking at the table, writing it down, looking at the table. Um, next, super important. These tables are written that the product is always one mole. Uh, when I wrote out this reaction, I made it as the product for one mole. That's why I put the three halves in front of that oxygen. Um, is that all of these are written when you form one mole of that of that substance. That's going to be really important. Um, next, if you have anything in elemental form, I wrote this down for hydrogen. Well, hydrogen elements, they're not formed here on Earth. They're formed in the stars. So their heat of formation then we're going to put as zero, as zero. Um, and that's something that you will be expected to know. Um, you could be given a test or a question and they will give you all of the heat of formations that you need, but they won't include any of the elements. They won't include like magnesium, calcium, hydrogen gas, fluorine gas, because they expect you to know oh, those are elemental form by themselves, elements by themselves, there is zero, there is zero. Um, phases are also very important when you're reading these tables. A common mistake that students will make, they go back and forth with these tables so much, they find the compound and write down the number, but don't double check the phase. Look at this. Water, H2O liquid is negative 285.83 kilojoules per mole, but water gas, the formation of water gas 
it releases just a little less energy. It releases 241. 0.83 kilojoules per mole. So this is just from my experience. Be careful when you look at the tables, also look at phases. Uh, okay, now taking all of this information, we can find uh, the heat, the enthalpy of a reaction by using the heat of formation of all of the compounds in that chemical reaction. So let's use some of this information that we have here to find the enthalpy for a chemical reaction. We are going to combine calcium oxide plus carbon dioxide. Um, and I've already looked these up for the phases that we needed. Um, yield a calcium carbonate. And here's our big question. Oops, what's the enthalpy for this reaction? What's the enthalpy for that reaction? Uh, when we combine these reactants to form that product, and notice this isn't a heat of formation because I'm combining compounds, not elements. Um, when we form, uh, combine these reactants to form that product, is it endothermic, exothermic, and what's the value? So we're going to use this formula up here. Uh, it tells us that the enthalpy for an entire reaction, okay, this thermochemical equation, is going to be the sum of the moles times the heat of formation of all the products minus the summation of the moles times the heat of formation of reactants. I'm going to label two things here for you. N represents the moles. So you're going to look at the molar coefficients. This one's pretty easy because it's a one. Now here's why that N, the moles, is so important. Again, the heat of formation is written for one mole per mole. So if I had a two right here, I would be, um, I would have twice the amount of energy for that calcium oxide. So really important that you remember the moles and you'll see me do this. Um, the sigma right here, remember in math, that means sum. And very typical, almost everything we do in chemistry is final minus initial products minus reactants. So I'm going to write this symbolically first, and then I'm going to plug in the numbers. Um, I recommend the first couple of times that you do this, write it symbolically, and then once you get the hang of it, then you can skip the symbolic and just go straight to plugging in the numbers. Okay, so the heat, the enthalpy for this reaction, is going to be, and I do a big bracket, it's going to be the sum of the products. So I look, I've got one mole. So one mole times the heat of formation of calcium carbonate. And I only have one product, I'm done. So products minus, now it's going to be the sum of the reactants. So I do a big bracket. My first reactant, I've got one mole times the heat of formation for calcium oxide plus, because it's a sum, I'm adding my other reactant, one mole of that times the heat of formation of carbon monoxide. Oh, I'm so sorry, that was supposed to be carbon dioxide. <laughs> there we go, that wouldn't work otherwise. Okay, carbon dioxide. Now, I just look at my table, so you'd flip to your table, find these numbers, and I substitute in the values for the heats of formations of those compounds. So the heat of reaction is going to be one times calcium carbonate, negative 1207.6 minus, and be really careful, products minus reactants, treat that mathematically. Be careful with that. Um, one times heat of formation of calcium oxide negative 635.1 plus one mole times heat of formation of CO2 negative 393.5. Okay, so you plug all of this into your calculator and the final heat of formation is a positive, it's endothermic, 179 kilojoules per mole. So we have to put 179 kilojoules into this reaction to make it form the calcium carbonate. Um, 
Now, this would be a really basic question for you. When I look at AP tests, um, and I'll be honest, me testing my students, there will be a twist in the question. And here's a common, here it is, here's the common twist. You will be given the delta H for the reaction. You'll be given this right here. They'll give you the thermal chemical equation and the unknown will be one heat of formation. In that case, it's critical. I would write it out symbolically, plug in your numbers because they'll give you delta H. And in this um, case, maybe they would leave, they wouldn't give you um, the part of the table that has the calcium carbonate and you would have to figure out the heat of formation. So buzzwords that you're looking for. If they say enthalpy of reaction, or if they're writing out the thermal chemical equation with the, delta, um, with the delta H on it. If they ask for the heat of formation, that is key. They ask for heat of formation, that means that one of these products minus reactants is going to be your unknown. So here's your straightforward question. And then a twist on this question, you're given the enthalpy for the reaction, you find one heat of formation. As long as you identify what they give you, and what you need, easy, easy reaction. Just be careful looking at the words. What do they give you? Where do you start? What do they want? What do you find? Where do you end? Okay, great work.